tidings, ladies and gentlemen of the Lodge, and welcome back. Today we are serving up a quick Kingdom Hearts video, this one focusing on none other than Vanitas. This video is going to be a continuation of my last video, Was Every Organization Member a Traitor? So if you haven't seen that one yet, go ahead and check it out first, or you're going to want to watch it at the end of this video. But anyway, in that video, we examined all of the Organization Members and found they all had a history of betrayal. However, I seem to have forgotten about Vanitas in that video, but that turned out to be a blessing in disguise. Because upon examining Vanitas and his history through the series, as far as his character is concerned, I can't seem to find any sort of betrayal. Now, if that does turn out to be true, and we'll do a quick examination of his appearances in the series, so in the first part of the video, we're actually going to examine just that. And in the second part of the video, I'll tell you exactly why it makes sense that Vanitas is the only organization member to not have a betrayal on his record. But before we get ahead of ourselves, let's just dive on in and review our man Vanitas. So, Vanitas appears in the series four different times. We have him in Dark Road, we have him in Birth by Sleep, briefly in Dream Drop Distance, and then there's Kingdom Hearts 3. So, when we zero in on the Dark Road appearance, it's really only dialogue driven just between him and Xehanort, and there's no apparent betrayal between them. You do see Xehanort basically figure Vanitas out that he wasn't born from Ventus's heart, but is in fact one of the ancient true darknesses. But as we'll see in the future, it's not like him calling that out kept the two of them from working together. Then if we look at Birth by Sleep, we can see that Vanitas complied with Master Xehanort's plans and was happy to play a role in the reforging of the Keyblade. There is no evidence of betrayal from Vanitas in Birth by Sleep. We have a brief appearance from him in Dream Drop Distance, but again, much like his Dark Road one, it's dialogue driven and there's no action of betrayal to latch onto. Then we have Kingdom Hearts 3, which in the second half of the video we're going to zoom in on this, but as far as this part is concerned, again, in Kingdom Hearts 3, he complied with Master Xehanort's plans. There aren't any words or actions that would imply a betrayal. Was he toying with the whole Aqua Ventus situation in the Land of Departure? Yes. But remember, the organization had an interest in Ventus's heart waking up. They needed the Seven Lights and Thirteen Darknesses. So again, when we examine Vanitas and look throughout the series, there's no act of betrayal to latch onto. Which makes him an outlier in the organization. But now let me tell you why this actually makes perfect sense. So for one, like we discussed in the first video, all the traitors are connected to the sigil, the X, right? As it says in the Book of Prophecies, the traitor is the one who bears the sigil. We know the organization members have the sigil in their name because of Xemnas and the fact they've turned to nobodies. Then you have Xehanort, Young Xehanort, and Terra Xehanort, who at a default have the sigil in their name. But then that leaves us with Ansem, Dark Slash Replica Riku, and Vanitas. With Ansem, we know his existence is a consequence of Xehanort and his betrayal of Ansem the Wise. And with Dark Slash Replica Riku, he was modeled after the Riku that fell to darkness and Ansem's control in Kingdom Hearts 1. Again, connecting back to Xehanort, the betrayal, and by default, the sigil. But when we think of Vanitas, he doesn't have the sigil in his name, and therefore we haven't witnessed any sort of betrayal on his part. However, with that said, we cannot ignore that the sigil is on his outfit. When you also consider that it is very strongly implied right now that Vanitas is one of the true ancient darknesses, perhaps there's a betrayal that can be attributed to the history of that darkness. But as far as the form of Vanitas goes, again, like I said, whether it's the missing sigil in his name or his history of the series, there doesn't really appear to be any betrayal to latch onto. Now, if we wanted to be charitable about it, we could in theory say that he betrayed Ventus, but again, I'm not necessarily buying that one. The last thing I wanted to bring up, though, is this final conversation between Sora, Vanitas, and Ventus. In a sense, you have Sora and Ventus pleading Vanitas to stand by their side, to join them. And if Vanitas were to do so, that would be his act of betrayal. Which to me means we need to keep a close eye on Vanitas, especially if he does make a return in the Lost Masters arc. Recall that Vanitas told them that he does stand by their side. Now, what the implications of that are, I don't know. But if Vanitas does truly see himself that way, then maybe there's a quote-unquote betrayal being set up for Vanitas down the line. But again, we're just going to have to wait to see that out. So to round us out here, when it comes to Vanitas' canon appearances in the Kingdom Hearts series, there is not an act of betrayal that we can latch onto, making him an outlier from the organization. 
Symbolically, when we look at Vinitas, he does not have the traitor's sigil in his name, again, making him an outlier to the organization, but we do have to take note of the sigil on his outfit. So anyway, I just wanted to get that out there. I think this is really cool that every single organization member was a traitor, except for the one that traces back to an ancient darkness. Again, we'll see where this goes. I just wanted to get this quick video out here for all of you today. So the rest of you, be good out there, be good to yourselves and each other, and I will see all of you beautiful sickos and normies next time.